I'm Ryan O'Dowd, and you're listening to Ryan's Audiobooks on the Issues Magazine YouTube channel. Today we're continuing with 1013 of Adam from the Son of Knowledge by Lex Hickson Nur al-Jarahi. Picking up in the middle of Chapter 5, Islamic Meditations. Surah Iklas What is sincerity, or Iklas, other than living completely in the affirmation of the unity of reality? The sincere heart knows but a single love in union with divine love. The sincere mind knows only the single goal of union, affirming this goal instinctively and intuitively throughout the rich diversity of its thoughts and perceptions. The sincere mind never attempts to fragment reality in its imagination, projecting false oppositions and dichotomies onto the perfectly harmonious and just expanse of Allah's creation. The sincere heart perceives and cherishes only the existence of Allah who is truth. O self-subsisting truth, Yahach, expressed completely through all beings, yet abiding completely beyond all beings, please lift the sincere heart and mind into the timeless clarity and simplicity, where the divine attribute of truth becomes the actual spiritual state and station of the soul. Accomplish our dying into truth and resurrection as truth by the inconceivable power of your Quranic Surah Iklas. O inconceivable Lord of Truth. The four luminous verses of Surah Iklas, this organ of vision in the spiritual body of the living Quran, are precisely the four mystic steps the dervish takes to approach the hand of the Sheikh, which becomes the hand of the Prophet, the hand of transcendence, the hand of truth, the hand of union. Each time the sincere lover of truth recites the four verses of the Surah of Sincerity, the shining ayats, these divine signs become the actual steps of Sharia, Tariqa, Hakika, and Marifa, sacred law, mystic path, union, and servanthood. The entire path of return into the source is thus traversed in a few intense seconds of Quranic recitation, leading from the beautiful broad foundation, the noble five pillars of Islam, up long stairways of light through chambers of intuition, mystical training and teaching, to the roof garden of the palace of realization, entirely open to the sky of truth with no intervening form, structure, figure, pattern, concept, design, object, or subject. At the intonation Amin, one awakens within Allah as the servant of Allah. The sublime oral tradition affirms that this small surah iklas, although appearing just a brilliant drop of molten gold in the golden ocean of the glorious Quran, actually contains one-third of the creative and transformative power of the entire book of reality. Surah iklas is the solace and joy of every sincere heart and mind who has awakened and responded to the invitation of truth, embracing and being embraced by the universal way of Islam. This royal way dethrones the limited itself, disclosing true humanity as the sultan of prayer and the crown of creation. Surah Iklas is the royal robe of the realization of all-embracing oneness and the royal bearing of the lovers who experience their very existence to be the sub self-subsistence of truth. Surah Iklas is the divine instrument that create mystic farkirs who ask for nothing other than Allah and who have lost every possession and every level of themselves in the boundless light of Ahad, the oneness who imparts ineffable diversity to creation, while subtly removing all diversity from sincere minds and hearts. The blessed divine name of oneness, Ya Ahad, appears twice in Surah Iklas. A soul once entered Medina the Illumined, sincerely intending before Allah to complete the great pilgrimage to Mecca the Ennobled. After taking full ablutions, body shining with the sacred illustrations in which water becomes liquid light in every part of the body it touches brightens with heavenly purity. This yearning soul, surrounded by beautiful dervish companions, entered the refreshment of sleep mercifully ordained by Allah Most High. Since this soul came sincerely to the abode of the Prophet, it received the generous hospitality of the Beloved One of Allah, whose presence has sanctified and sweetened the very dust of the valley of nearness called Medina. The most tender-hearted Muhammad, upon him be abundant peace, 
clearly perceived with his all-seeing eyes, which are simply the eyes of divine mercy. This pilgrim soul, swimming joyfully in the companionship of true dervishes and surrounded by the powerful protection and intercession of a true mystic sheikh, who had led this soul by the hand from the modern world of carelessness to the ancient desert of carefulness. As his holy sheikh Muzaffar maintained night-long vigil beside the radiant palace, the tomb of the prophet, the aspiring soul, under his care was sent a dream from the highest paradise. While dreaming, this fortunate soul was informed that it would be allowed to pose from the depth of its being a single question to the sheikh of sheikhs, the beloved prophet of Allah. Now, strong enough to bear a direct vision of the radiant sun of knowledge, this soul conveyed as question to the prophet by intermediary, a question concerning certain passages in the Holy Quran implying that all beings in creation regardless of their way of life or their level uh, in the kingdom of the life, are bowing to Allah and praising Allah with every thought and action, however limited or sublime. After posing in the dream realm what was to be its ultimate question, this pilgrim was awakened suddenly, hair still wet from full ablutions taken before sleeping. Held in the gentle embrace of the sacred city, surrounded by the perfect silence of the hours before dawn, this sincere soul was plunged into the depth of the mystery of divine unity. This immense question had been asked in the light of the Holy Quran, and now the answer came through this clear Quranic light, streaming directly from the diamond soul, the distributor of the light of prophecy, to the hearts of those living in the contemplation of revelation. With the conscious power of one-third of the Quran, the condensed Arabic verses of the noble Surah Iqlas flowed into the whole being of the soul as the generous response of the final prophet to its own final question. No distance remained between Quranic surah and grateful recipient. Question and questioner were absorbed into the absolute sincerity of oneness, like pools of rain drawn by the noonday sun, weeping copious tears beyond limited emotion. The soul took ablutions and performed two cycles of the prayer of Islam, during which every movement was sincerity, every breath sincerity. Nothing existed at that moment other than the surah of sincerity, which proclaims and offers the experiential key to the highest truth. Allah is complete oneness. Nothing can exist outside all-embracing oneness. Universe after universe within this divine creation are simply the attributes of Allah, praising the essence of Allah. There is only one to pray and to receive the prayers. There is only Allah, only Allah, only Allah. The sublime oral tradition of beloved Muhammad Mustafa, the prophet who responds to the final question of humanity with the ultimate disclosure of unity, recounts a profound spiritual experience that occurred in Medina 14 centuries ago. This experience continues to blossom today in the Medina of the sincere mind and heart. One of the lovers of truth, a spiritually mature person, leader of the prayers among the helpers of the Prophet, those who had welcomed him to Medina, used to recite only Surah Iqlas, along with Surah Fatiha, through all the cycles of prayer from dawn to midnight, day after day. The people complained to their Prophet about this repetition, asking for a greater variety of Quranic verses in the prayer. The Beloved One of Allah, Sublime Servant and Messenger, addressed this lover of Surah Iqlas. What forbids you from doing what your companions ask you to do? Why do you recite Surah Iqlas in every rakat? The dervish lover replied with utter sincerity to this inquiry from his most exalted sheikh. I love this Surah. The Messenger of Allah replied, Your love for Surah Iqlas will cause you to enter paradise. Estagfirula. The constant cry of the dervish heart is Estagfirula, Estagfirula, Estagfirula. May the healing stream of Allah's forgiveness bathe the hearts of all human beings cleansing every channel in their spiritual bodies from the subtle fire of the negation of love, their rebellion against love, the self-centered distortion of love. At the thought of any action of its own that has fanned flames of negativity in others, injecting the venom of deception or the poison of division into the precious bodies of love, 
the dervish heart cries out for forgiveness. Estag firula, estag firula, estag firula. The dervish soul of love, hypersensitive to subtle forms of the rejection of love, always includes itself in the spontaneous prayer for Allah's forgiveness to all humanity. Estag firula, estag firula, estag firula. The more it hungers and thirsts for righteousness, the more intensely does this soul pray the continuous prayer of longing for the uprightness and dignity of all human beings. Estag firula, estag firula, estag firula. The dervish soul exists in conscious, loving communion and community with all souls. Whenever the limited self attempts to separate from others, placing itself in opposition to others or in its competition with others, or making itself seem superior to others, the sensitive dervish heart cries out, May Allah forgive me. Estag firula, estag firula. Estag firula. Whenever the limited self attempts to claim credit for any holy or helping action, the sensitive heart immediately and in instinctively, like a drowning person grasping for a breath of air, cries inwardly with great power, Estag firula, estag firula, estag firula. Whenever the limited self in its supreme foolishness blames the all-merciful, all-embracing will of Allah Most High for its own negative actions or negative responses to any situation, the heart of purity safeguarded by the holy way of submission sincerely cries out, Estag firula, Estag firula, Estag firula. The friends of Allah are being invited by the Lord along the mystical path. They are being exalted in humility. They have received clear signs of this sublime invitation and secret inward exaltation through taking the hands of a true Sheikh, the, a mirror on earth of the guide of mystic guides, the beloved Sheikh of humanity, Muhammad the Messenger. With the living energy of Allah's own forgiveness, these courageous dervishes of self-forgetfulness cry out at the very claim of the limited self to have any rights of its own, Estagfirullah, Estagfirullah, Estagfirullah. At the threshold of spiritual perfection, where human life begins to become what Allah all generous created it to be, the dervish stream of constant divine remembrance even rejects the claim of the limited self to any existence whatsoever apart from the one reality. Were this mature dervish soul to think in terms of me and mine even for a second, its cry would blast forth like the trumpet at the end of time, Estag virula, Estag virula, Estag virula. Even after the sensitive distraction of awareness from the only reality, such sensitive hearts feel the need to renew ablutions, repeating with genuine fervor, Estag firula, Estag firula, Estag firula. The ultimate cry for divine forgiveness, the Estag firula, that repents of the very principle of separate self-awareness, the Estag firula that longs to merge in Allah and to live within Allah. Through the instrumentality of Allah alone, is the sweetest word that can pass through human lips. This perfect Estag Firula is the resurrection into paradise of all humanity without exception. This Estag Firula is no longer a prayer but a spiritual station. This is the tear of love from a saint of love that extinguishes the fires of hell. Estag Firula, Estag Firula, Estag Firula. The most sublime prayer for forgiveness is reported in the noble oral tradition of the prophet of forgiveness, the one who intercedes for the forgiveness of humanity at the abode of essence. The supremely tender-hearted Muhammad may the forgiveness of Allah flow through him into all the worlds which were created through his light and for his light. Abu Haraya, the intimate dervish lover of the holy prophet, who carefully observed every visible detail in the life of the master of masters, noticed that during the prayer the beloved one of Allah kept silent for a fleeting moment between the words of transcendence, Allahu Akbar, and the resuscitation of the living word of Allah. The resonant and radiant Quran, for the spiritual benefit of future generations, this intensely devoted companion, may Allah elevate him always into companionship with divine love, inquired of the Prophet of Love what he said to his Lord during the brief interval of intense inwardness and intimacy. The response illuminates the essence of Estag Firula, the beauty of Estag Firula, the wonderful intensity of Estag Firula. These precious words, totally fresh after 14 centuries of careful remembrance, cleanse the hearts of lovers and empty them entirely of the deceptions of the limited self. 
The supreme servant of Allah answered his devoted disciple immediately and openly about his own secret inward estag for Allah. O oh, brothers and sisters, listen to the sweet voice of the Sultan of Lovers that heals negativity, that puts out the hellfire that washes the dust of limited desires and concepts from the robe of consciousness. I asked the Prophet, what do you say in the pause between takbir and recitation? The Prophet answered, I pray, O oh Allah, set me apart from my faults as the East and West are set apart from each other. Cleanse me of my faults as a white garment is washed clean. O oh Allah, wash away my faults with water, snow, and hail. Thus speaks the culmination of the light of prophecy within the secret heart of humanity, which responds gratefully and ecstatically, May Allah forgive us. Estag Allah, Estag Allah, Estag Allah. Salawat and Hadith Compiled during a more recent Ramadan, this minuscule selection from the thousands of authentic oral traditions of the Prophet is a meditation in itself, without need for commentary. Arranged thematically, these pregnant sayings are each preceded by a different salawat or prayerful invocation of the Messenger of Allah through his resonant names and radiant epithets. The resulting atmosphere of reverence tangibly enhances our capacity to receive the blessings of his words, spoken in the present tense of eternal companionships. These are not obscure hadiths favored solely by mystics, but are selected from the most popular and widely circulated anthologies. Expanded into dignified English, these inspiring utterances represent Muhammad the Messenger as the vast majority of Muslims have always understood him, a person of the greatest tenderness and commitment clement wisdom. Some of these oral traditions are Hadith Qudsi, which manifest directly through the voice of Allah. The others are spoken from the same ultimate source through the tender human voice of the messenger. These renderings are on the level of tafsir or interpretation. Chapter 6, Salawat and Hadith, Praise of the Messenger and His Inspired Words. Ya katam ul mursalin wa kulafa ir Rashidin, O seal of the divine messengers and his rightly guided representatives. Practice of Universal Religion While pointing at his noble heart three times, the glorious seal of messengers proclaims, True religion is right here. The man of prayer upon him be peace remarks, Prayer is light. The beautiful light of guidance upon him be peace reveals, The supreme gate to goodness is a person praying in the depths of the night. The Sheikh of all Sheikhs advises his blessed companions. Always consult your own heart directly. Righteousness is whatever the inward heart is tranquil about. Wrongfulness is whatever causes the inward heart to waver. The first light in universal intellect upon him be peace relates these words directly from the source of the universe. I manifest in the manner in which each conscious being expects me to manifest. The supreme master of the spiritual path advises. Live every moment in this limited world as if you were a traveler in a strange land. The wise counselor for all humanity without exception continues. At evening do not expect to be alive by morning. In the morning do not assume that you will survive till evening. The messenger Muhammad upon him be peace relates these words directly from the exalted creator. O children of Adam, how often you complain about time, yet I alone am time. Noble Ahmad, the praiseworthy, upon him be peace instructs, follow any negative action directed with a good action. The negative one will be erased and annulled. Proclaims the guide of all guides, upon him be peace. Never permit yourself to remain angry. Advises the reservoir of prophetic teaching, upon him be peace. Either speak sincerely about goodness or remain silent. Our subtle master points out to his companions. Part of becoming an excellent practitioner of universal religion is to learn how to leave alone whatever is not your particular spiritual responsibility. Advises the friend of all souls, upon him be peace. 
Abandon instantly whatever makes you doubtful, and embrace wholeheartedly whatever genuinely frees you from doubt. The noble bearer of the glorious Quran recites these words directly from the revealer of the Quran. O oh, my servants, I do not permit myself a single act of compulsion, so neither is compulsion of any kind permissible among you. Proclaims the nonviolent warrior of truth upon him be peace. Among you there should be neither harming nor reciprocating harm. Proclaims the tender intercessor, who wept all night for the forgiveness of a spiritual community. Never turn away from one another or undercut one another, even to the slightest degree. Warns the messenger of universal religion, upon him be peace. A faithful person is brother to all. He never oppresses his spiritual brothers, never fails them, never deceives them, never regards them as inferior. Pronounces the president of the parliament of prophets. No person has become truly faithful to universal religion until he wishes for his brothers exactly what he wishes for himself. The final prophet, upon him be peace, speaks clearly. Of all that I have shown you to perform as universal religion, humbly perform as much as you can. The noble Mahmud, upon him be peace, states with perfect clarity, true religion is sincerity of heart. The noble Mahbub, upon him be peace, confirms, purity of heart constitutes one half of the universal religion. The sublime leader of the prayers for all humanity advises, Worship Allah Most High with the intense sincerity you would feel if you directly perceived him. You can attain this intensity by knowing full well that he is directly perceiving you. The bearer of the joyous news of paradise remarks, no person has become completely faithful to universal religion until his entire inward inclination is in perfect accord with me and with knowledge I have brought. The supreme lover of truth who opens the gates of paradise to all humanity affirms, Whoever sincerely follows any path to seek spiritual knowledge, Allah Most High will open and make easy for him the way to paradise reports the non-violent warrior of divine love, upon him be peace. I have ordered and ordained by Allah Most High to wage spiritual warfare with my people until they clearly witness that there is no reality apart from Allah and that Muhammad is a messenger of Allah until they perform pure prayer and give selflessly in charity. Then only will they have gained true protection. The intercessor for all spiritual nations, for subtle beings, and for angels, upon him be peace, relates these words directly from the supreme reality. If my devoted servant draws near to me by the measure of a hand, I draw near to him by the measure of an arm. If my humble servant approaches me at the speed of walking, I come to him at the speed of running. Charitable Giving Comments, the beloved one of Allah, upon him be peace. Loving generosity is alone the true demonstration of universal religion. Declares the noble prophet of the Arabs. Each part of the physical body should perform some kind of charitable giving every day. The bearer of the universal message, upon him be peace, remarks. Charitable giving extinguishes negativity as effectively as water extinguishes fire. The prophet of love, upon him be peace, explains to his companions. To mediate justly between two people is charitable giving. To help a person with his mount or his baggage is charitable giving. To offer a single good or kind word is to give generously in charity. Every step taken on the way to prayer is pure charity to the world. Just to remove a sharp or dangerous object from a path is to give in charity to all humanity. The intimate companion of Archangel Gabriel, upon them both be peace, reveals, Whosoever helps any person in the form of pressing need, Allah Most High will immediately change his destiny, both here on earth and in eternity. Confirms the friend of humanity, upon him be peace. Allah Most High will offer special assistance to his humble servant, as long as that servant continues consistently and kindly to assist his brothers. 
reveals the mercy to all worlds upon him be peace. Every single repetition of praise, every subhanallah, every alamha dulila, every Allahu akbar, and every la ilaha illallah is a supreme form of charitable giving. Confirms the beloved Mustafa upon him be peace. Offering all praises to Allah alone with the sublime affirmation, Allah Abdulila entirely fills the divine scales of justice. The beloved Mujtaba, upon him be peace, relates these exalted words directly from Allah Most High. O children of Adam, pour forth whatever wealth has been given to you upon anyone in any kind of need, and I will pour forth my divine wealth upon you. The one who is intimate with the Lord of the Worlds relates these tender words directly from the Most Merciful. I will divinely proclaim on the awesome day of resurrection, O children of Adam, I was ill and you refused to nurse me. They will reply astonished, How could we nurse you who are the Lord of the Worlds? I will then respond individually to each soul mentioning the name of someone whom it knew on earth. Do you not remember when my servant fell ill and you failed to visit him? If you had come to nurse this person, you would have found me through him. Precisely the same is true about all those you have not fed or given drink. Infinite Divine Forgiveness The Mercy the mercy of Allah to all worlds relates these words directly from the exalted creator of the worlds. O children of Adam, so long as you call directly upon me and supplicate with intense sincerity, I will always forgive you whatever you may have done and you will take absolutely no offense. O children of Adam, were you to come before me with negative thoughts and actions as vast as the entire earth, facing my unity alone, without ascribing any duality to supreme reality, I would present you an equally vast forgiveness. The noble caretaker who guards the ocean of Quranic meaning, Prophet Muhammad, upon him be peace, proclaims, When Allah Most High decreed the existence of creation, he firmly committed himself by inscribing in his original book, My divine mercy extends infinitely beyond my divine judgment. Explaining the ecstatic lover of Allah who prays constantly, O Lord, increase me in knowledge. Actions consist solely of the energy formed by the intentions behind them. Each person will receive from Allah solely upon the basis of which he intends. The messenger of the infinite divine mercy upon him be peace, explains carefully to his blessed companions. Concerning the person who sincerely intends a good action but fails to complete it, Allah Most Merciful records this intention in the Book of Divine Awareness as a completed good deed. Concerning the person who both intends and completes a good action, Allah Most Merciful records it as ten good deeds or increases its spiritual value by as much as seven hundred times or even more. Concerning the person who intends a negative action but does not actually perform it, Allah Most Merciful regards and records this very omission as a full good deed. Concerning the person who both intends and actually performs a negative action, Allah Most Merciful records it as only one bad deed, or forgives it entirely. Reveals the Beloved One of Allah, upon him be peace. Out of love for me, Allah Most High has miraculously pardoned whoever may join my spiritual community for all their inadvertence, forgetfulness, and negative actions performed under various external pressures. The Messenger of Allah relates these divine words directly from Allah. Rebellious persons who sincerely feel my divine attraction and merely sit near those who are immersed in praising me will be forgiven all their rebellious actions. The spiritual sovereign dressed in the garb of a humble man relates these divine words directly from the Lord of Love. O oh my servants, without even being aware, you are constantly falling into negative thoughts and actions day and night. But seek forgiveness directly from me, and your negations will be erased and annulled. The Prophet of Allah, upon him be peace, relates these words directly from the Lord of Power. Whoever dares to claim, or even swears by me, that I will not forgive a certain one of my servants, will hereby have his own good actions nullified. 
relates the distributor of the light of prophecy to all hearts upon him be peace. A certain rebellious man directed his sons to cremate his body when he died. Brought before the Most High, this soul was asked why he had made such a request. He replied that it was solely from fear of meeting directly with Allah. For this alone the All-Merciful forgave the man every one of his many offenses. The mystical traveler who ascended through the seven heavens into the direct presence of essence reveals. During the final night of the final third of the night, until the first light of the dawn, Allah is ceaselessly calling who is praying that I may respond, who is supplicating that I may grant, who is seeking forgiveness that I may forgive. The lover of humankind whose intercession is always successful relates this mystery to his blessed companions. When I encounter my precious Lord on the day of resurrection, I will fall him in prostration and remain there as long as it may please him. Thereupon he will divinely proclaim, Raise your head, intercede, and your intercession will be accepted. I will begin to praise my Lord with a unique form of praise that he will teach me at that moment, and then I will intercede four times for all human beings to enter paradise. During the fourth intercession there will emerge, liberated from the fires of hell, persons who have been affirmed Allah, ilaha, illallah only once, and who possess only a single atom of goodness and kindness in their hearts. The gatherer of all humanity under the green banner of praise relates these words directly from Allah Most High. O my servants, let whoever among you perceives goodness everywhere praise only Allah. Whoever perceives anything other than divine goodness can blame no one but himself. Thus concludes 10.7 in the middle of chapter 6 of Adam from the Son of Knowledge by Lex Hickson Nur al-Jarahi. Next time, section 1014 will pick up again in, in chapter 6. I will see you then. Alam.